In this example, we're going to show you how to create the vectors for the Gothic quatrefoil that you can see here. We'll look at a variety of ways to draw shapes from inform to using the transform shortcuts to creating offsets and circular arrays. We're also going to look at how we can edit shapes whereby we'll look at welding, subtracting and trimming vectors. Throughout the video you will see how we make use of the layers feature to organise all of the data. Let's go to File, Close, and we're going to create a new file. In here we're working with a single sided job, then I need to specify my job size, so in this case we're going to go 30 for the width, 12 for the height, material thickness is going to be 1 inch, my Z0 position will be on the material surface and my XY datum position, we're going to have that in the centre, and I could go ahead and press OK. So for this example, I'm going to make sure that I have geometry and smart snapping switched on to aid me in the drawing process. Now if I go to edit snap options, or I could use the keyboard shortcut key F4, I'll open up the snapping options dialog box. And you can see here under geometry and smart snapping, we have various options in each of these snap modes that we could utilise when drawing and aligning our vectors. Okay, so we're going to go to the default settings here, go ahead, press OK. Now the first shape that we're going to create is going to represent the outline shape of our part. Before we go and create that shape, I just want to start by organising the layer that I'm working with. So in this case I'm going to go to my layers bar here, I'm going to change the name from layer 1 to something that is more representative of the shape that we're about to create. So I'm just going to click on layer 1, you'll see now I'm able to change the text there, and I'm going to call this simply outline shape. Click in the white space, you can see it's now changed. So to create the outline shape we're going to look at drawing a rectangle. So I want the centre of my rectangle to be here at x0, y0. So here I'm just going to specify a width, in this case we're going to go with 27 in the width and then for the height we're going to go 10.5 there. Press create, you can see it's created that rectangle based on the parameters I've entered here. So we could go ahead and we could close that down. And so now I'd like to look at adding in a new layer so I'm going to come over to my layers bar here, use the option add new layer, and we can give that a name, we're going to call this one top and bottom grooves, click in the white space, make that the active layer, as the vectors that I draw now I want to go on this layer here. So let's just click in the space there, the next thing we want to do is look at drawing a rectangle. So we've seen how we can create a rectangle in form by choosing an anchor point and then specifying the width and the height. This time we're going to look at how we can just manually draw it in combination with transform shortcut keys. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to snap to the corner of the rectangle we already have here. I'm just going to pull the rectangle out like so and I'm just going to come over to this side and just bring that up a little. And so I've got the width of my rectangle that I'd like, but I want to give this a precise height of half an inch. So what I could do is simply type in 0 0.5 as highlighted at the bottom there, and when I press Y, it's going to give that Y value a height of half an inch. So let's just close that down. And so with that created, I'd like to move that up precisely 3 eighths of an inch. So to do that, I'm going to select it, I'm going to come over to Transform Objects, Move Selected Object. Now I'm going to move that relative from its current position, and we're going to go up the Y axis, and so here I can type in a value to move it to. Now, in this case, I want to go 3 eighths of an inch, so I could simply type that in as a fraction by putting in 3 slash 8, and then equals, and then that equals will give me the decimal value. We can see that value in there, I can press apply and you'll see it's moved that up by 3 eighths of an inch. So let's just close that down. So now what I'd like to do is take this groove vector that we've just created and create a copy of it that's going to be flipped over the centre of our job vertically so it sits along the top up here. 
So with that selected, we can come over to Mirror Selected Objects. Here we've got various ways of mirroring or flipping objects that we may have selected. And in this case, as I said, what I would like to do is like to flip that vertically. So we want to go up the y-axis in this case. And we want to flip that about the job center, so that's this line here. And we want to create a mirrored copy, so we've got the copy on the other side. So to do that, simply press flip vertical, and you'll see it's created a copy based on the settings that we've got here. So let's just close that down. And now I'd like to look at creating the foils for our design. So let's go over to the layers here, and I'm going to add in a new layer. This layer we're going to call foils. And in this case, I don't need the outline shape switched on anymore, neither do I need top and bottom groups. So I'm just going to work with foils as the active layer here. So I'm just going to click into the white space there. So now I'd like to look at building the shapes that will form the foil shape. So to do that, we're going to start by drawing a circle. Now for the circle, I want the center point to be at x0, y0, and I want the diameter of this circle to be one and a half inches. Press create, and you'll see it's created that for me, and I can close that form down. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to take that circle, and I'd like to move that down the y-axis by a precise value of two-thirds of an inch. Now we saw earlier how we could use the Move Selected Objects tool to move an object. Now we're going to look at how we can select it and use the Transform shortcut keys in order for us to type the value in that we'd like to move it by. So to do that, I'm going to select it, and then we're going to select it again to put it into transform mode. Now with my left mouse button held down, I'm just going to take it by one of the handles, and I'm just going to nudge it down the axes that I'd like to move it to. So you can see we've gone down. And then I simply just type in a value, doing all of this whilst I still have my left mouse button held down. So you'll see at the bottom there that I'm now typing in two slash three for the two thirds and then if I press enter you'll see it's moved that down by the precise value of two thirds of an inch. Now with that circle selected I'd like to look at creating an array in a circular motion of this circle in order for me to create the base shapes for the trifoil. So with that selected let's come over to circular copy and so you'll see here we've got various options in the form, how we want to rotate it. So here we're going to specify our rotation centre. Okay, now I want this in the centre of our job here. Tip here is if I double click on this dot here, you'll see that I now have a rotation centre at the centre of my job. Okay, now I only want three copies here, I want the total angle 360 degrees, and we could go ahead, press copy, and then we could close that down. So now that we have our rotated copies, I'm only actually interested in the outline of all of these shapes. So we could look at using the welding tool in order for us to just keep the outline of each of these intersecting shapes. So if those selected, let's come over to Edit Objects, Weld Selected Vectors, and you'll see that it's just removed everything inside there. So now what I'd like to do is create a copy of this vector that's offset inwards by a certain amount. So if that vector is selected, let's come over to Offset Vectors. We're going to offset that inwards, and we're going to offset that inwards by a quarter of an inch. Create Sharp Offset Corner switched on, select New switch on, and then we could go ahead and offset that. And you can see we've just created that offset there. And we could close that down. So now I'd like to look at drawing a circle. So let's come over to Draw a Circle. Okay, now, rather than use the form here, I'm actually going to do a combination of actually manually drawing a circle out, followed by using the transform shortcut keys to input a precise diameter. Okay, so with my left mouse key still held down, I'm just going to go to my keyboard and I'm going to type in the diameter that I'd like that to be. So you'll see at the bottom highlighted there, I'm typing in 1.25 and then if I hit the letter D on the keyboard, that's going to give me a circle with a diameter of 1.25. So let's just close that form down. With that circle selected, I'm going to shift and select the inner trifoil and I'm going to look at welding those together. Let's use the weld option. 
can see it's done that for me there. Now we're going to look at creating another circle. So we're going to go over to the draw circle option and then here I'm just going to snap to the center point here, roughly sketch out a shape, and then I'm going to type in 7.5 followed by D for diameter and you'll see it's created that circle with a diameter of 7.5. So let's just close that circle form down. So now what I'd like to do is create a copy of this circle and I'd like to move it over in the x-axis by 9 inches. So to do this I could take this, we'll use the copy option here and then with that selected I could look at moving this, I could move this relative negative 9 inches in x, press apply, you'll see it's put that over 9 inches in the x-axis, close that down and then we'll just simply paste in the original vector there. Now the next thing I'd like to do is look at drawing a line that goes from the top of this circle here to the top of this circle here. So to do that we could just simply use the draw polyline tool. I'm going to snap to the top of that circle there, so you send that snap in place and I can click that. Then I'm going to snap to the top of this circle here, click and put that in place there. Right mouse click to come out of the polyline mode. Now what I'd like to do is position the trifold vectors so that the center of the two shapes that we have here is in the center of the two circle edges that we've got here. So to do that we're going to look at how we can utilize the smart snapping options to find the midpoint between two objects as we actually have no geometry here to snap to. So to do that I'm just going to select the outer vector, shift and select the inner vector here and then we're just going to look at grouping those so that it's just one entity that we're moving and I'm going to select it again to put it into transform mode. Okay, So I want the center point of our object to be in the center of the two sides of the circles here. So I'm going to pick it up by the center point here and I'm just simply going to come over to the left side of this circle here and you'll see I've snapped to that left side there. Okay, So I've essentially woke that up and just hovering over that point. I'm going to do the same to the other circle on the right hand side. So I'm going to come over, snap to that point there. Okay, So I've woken that point up, just simply hovering over that snap point. And I'm just going to drag back and I should be able to find that midpoint. You can see that my cursor's changed. It's telling me we've found the midpoint between the two points that we've woken up. And I can simply just deselect my mouse and we've put that in position in between the two circles thanks to the smart cursor. Now we're going to look at taking the trifle and aligning it to this line here directly up the y-axis. So if that trifle is selected, I'm going to hold down shift and select the line here. I'm just going to use this option zoom selected. And I'm just going to click into the white space there and then select the trifoil, select it again to put it into transform mode. I'm simply just going to take it by the top here and I'm just going to bring that up. You'll see that the smart cursor has enabled me to follow along the vertical line there and then I can snap to the horizontal line that we have and I could just simply click that in place and now we've successfully aligned the trifle to the top of our polyline layer thanks to the smart cursor. So let's use this option here to zoom to fit so now we're going to look at creating a couple of offsets. So I'm going to take this circle here, shift and select this circle here. I'm going to look at offsetting both of those outwards. So let's come into the offset tool, offset them outwards and then we're going to go by 0 0.375 in here and then we'll use the option to select new and press offset. Then we're going to go and look at offsetting the trifoil. Now you remember that we grouped uh, these vectors. I'm just going to right click here and use the option to ungroup objects. I'm just going to ungroup them back to the original objects layer. Okay, now what I'd like to do this time is I'd like to take the outer trifoil and we're going to look at offsetting that word outwards by the same amount. Offset that. You can see it's done that there for me. So let's just close that down. And with that vector selected, I'm going to shift and select 
the offset circles and I'm also going to select this line here. I'm going to move these to a new layer. So I'm going to right click, use the option move to layer, new layer and we're going to call this layer VCarve Shapes. Okay, let's just make that invisible for the time being and we'll press OK. You'll see those vectors have now disappeared. So let's go to our layers up here. We're going to switch off foils, switch on the VCarve shapes and you'll see that those vectors have been moved to this new layer. I'm going to make that the active layer and we'll just go ahead and click in the white space there. And with these vectors we're going to look at trimming them in order for us to create the shapes that we'll ultimately look at using to just VCarve. So before we use any form of trimming tool, I just want to draw in one more line. So I'm going to draw with the polyline, I'm going to snap to the right hand side of this circle here, snap to the left hand side of this circle here and then just right click to come out there. Then we're going to come over to Interactive Vector Trim and I'm going to trim away all the areas that I don't want. So I'm just going to click over the vectors that I don't need like so, so I'm left with the three vectors that I'd like to keep in order for us to ultimately come in and v-carve into. So let's close that down and so you'll see that when you select each one of these they're actually closed shapes and the reason for that is if we go into the interactive trim tool you'll see that we've got the option checked here rejoin trim sections automatically when form is closed. So let's just close that down. Next what I'd like to do is I'd like to look at mirroring these vectors that we've got here along the vertical. Uh, however, I don't want this line in place here. So I'm going to take that vector, put it into node edit mode and I'm just going to zoom in there, right click over the span and use the option here to delete the span or I could press D, that's the shortcut to delete that. So I'm just going to delete that you'll see we now have an open vector. So let's just put that into normal selection mode, use the option here, zoom to fit. So let's go and switch on the foils layer. Just click in the space there. I'm just going to take box select all of these here. I'm going to look at mirroring them. So they're selected. Let's come over to mirror selected objects, flip about job center, create mirrored copy. This time we're going to flip vertical see we've created that copy there. Let's close that down. Now you'll see that we still have two open vectors here. So I'm going to hold down shift to select both of those and then we're going to come over to edit objects, join open vectors. You can see at that tolerance we're going to have one closed vector. So let's join that, close that down. You'll see that we now have a closed vector there. Now what I'd like to do is take this vector here and this vector here and create a mirrored copy over to the left side of this circle here. So to help me do that I'm just going to draw in a line through the center of this circle like so, right click and then I'm going to select this vector here, shift and select this vector, shift and select the line and then we're going to come over to mirror selected objects. This time we're going to use the option here to flip about line okay? and when I do that you'll see it creates the copy about the line that we had selected there. So let's close that down, take that line, and we could just simply delete it using the delete key on the keyboard. Next thing I'd like to do is take a look at creating a mirrored copy of all of these vectors minus the center circle here and then creating a mirrored copy over to the right hand side here. So to select the vectors I'm just going to box select going from the top left here going down to the right and you'll see that box has selected all of the vectors that I'd like to have selected and when I click you'll see that they are all selected there. With those selected let's go into mirror selected objects, flip about job center, we want to create a mirrored copy, we want to flip that horizontally and we could go ahead and close that down. So now that we're done with the v-carve shapes I'm just going to turn that layer off. So just going to turn that off and then we're going to make the foils layer the active layer. So let's just click into the space there. 
And now we're going to look at creating the shapes that will ultimately form the quatrefoils that will sit in the centre of these larger circles. So to start that process, let's select this vector here and we're going to come over, I'm going to offset that, I'm going to offset that inwards by a quarter of an inch, make sure select new is switched on, press offset, so you see we've created that, the new offset is now selected, and with that selected we're going to offset that one inwards, I'm going to go in by three eighths of an inch, so we've put in three slash eight equals, it'll give me the numerical value there, I could go ahead and press offset, then we'll close that down, now I want to create a circle at the centre here, so x0, y0, pull, circle out, and we're going to make that three inches, so you can see by my cursor it's telling me we've got a diameter there of three inches, I'm just going to snap that in position, I'm going to close that down, what I'd like to do now is align the top of this circle to the top of this circle here, so I'm just going to take it, snap to the top of the circle, and then snap to the top of that circle there. Now to create the actual quatrefoil shape, we're going to do the same as what we did with the trifoils. So we're going to look at taking this circle, we're going to create a circular array. And do that about the center point of the job, so double click on that dot there, it'll take you to x0, y0. This time we're going to have four copies, and we could go ahead, copy that, and then we could close that down. Okay, now with these copies in place, we want to look at welding them, so we're just left with the outer shape, so to do that we're going to come over and weld those vectors. Okay, and the way we've welded them, you'll see we've also welded the intersection there, so I just need to simply select that and delete it as I don't need that vector. Now we're going to take that quatrefoil and we're going to create an offset, so we're going to offset that inwards by a quarter of an inch, go ahead, press offset, close that down. Then we're going to look at creating another circle, so we're going to use the draw circle option. This time I'm going to look at using the transform shortcut, so with my left mouse key still held down whilst I'm in draw circle mode, I'm going to type in 3.75 and then D for the diameter to create that circle there, and then we can close that down. Now with that circle selected, I'm going to hold down shift and select the inner quatrefoil vector there, I'm going to look at welding those also. Now I'm going to take the outer vector quatrefoil, I'm going to go and offset that, this time we're going to offset that outwards by 0 0.375, press offset, see it's created that there, and close that down, with that vector selected I'm going to hold down shift, I'm going to select this vector here, the right mouse click, I'm just going to move that to the VCarve shapes layer. So move that over there, and then we'll just come over to our foils layer, switch that off, switch on the VCarve shapes, make that the active layer, and this time rather than use the interactive vector trim tool, we're going to look at how we could subtract vectors. So I'm going to select the circle first, hold down shift and select the quatrefoil, what I'd like to do is remove these areas at the sort of 12, 3, 6, 9 o'clock positions. We only want to keep these shapes here. And so by selecting circle first, followed by the quatrefoil, I can come over and subtract the vectors, and it's going to subtract the second selected vector from the first. So if I do that, you'll see we're just left with these shapes here. So now let's go to our layers and we'll turn the foils layer back on. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to take everything that's sat within this centre circle here, create a copy of it over to the left circle and to the right circle. So to select everything within this circle here, I'm simply just going to draw a box so it just touches everything that I want in my selection, like so and I'm going to take it, put it into transform mode, and I'm going to hold down control in order for me to create my copy, take it from the center there, and I'm able to snap to the center point of this circle that we've got here.
and with this selection that we've got highlighted here I could do the same again, drag that over to this circle or I could simply use the mirror shortcut to flip it horizontally where I could just press Control for my copy, Shift and H to flip that over horizontally. Now we could just click in the white space there. So let's just switch on the outline shape, the top and bottom grooves and you'll see that we've now finished the design side of our Gothic Quatrefoil. Now you will find related videos to this tutorial is a tutorial that covers the 2D and 2.5D toolpaths to cut the Gothic Quatrefoil panel out. So let's go ahead and save this file. So go to File, Save As and in the Gothic Quatrefoil project folder you've got a file there called Gothic Quatrefoil Vector Drawing. You can save that and then you can access that from the project folder.